Hello everyone, in this video I do a comprehensive set of scientific tests on the Huawei Band 6. First, I'll test the quality of the sleep tracking against a scientific EEG monitor. Second, I'll test the heart rate accuracy. Third, I will look at the SpO2 or oxygen saturation. And finally, I'll do a step counting test. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Before getting to the test, I would like to provide the most important background information on the Huawei Band 6 in under 30 seconds. The Huawei Band 6 has all-day SpO2 monitoring, a 1.47 inch display and it weighs in at just 18 grams. It has an accelerometer, gyroscope and an optical heart rate sensor. It can measure your blood oxygen levels, it has 24 hour heart rate monitoring using Huawei's TrueScene 4.0 technology and it measures sleep using Huawei's TrueSleep algorithm. Overall, the Huawei Band 6 looks and feels very similar to the Honor Band 6 and has a lot of the same features and sensors. The Huawei Band 6 does support 96 sport modes, which is more than the Honor Band. With normal usage, the band has 14 days of battery life and with heavy usage, 10 days. However, my channel is not so much about listing features. Instead, on my channel, I try to test the accuracy of the different measurements. Over the last few weeks, the Huawei Band 6 has been one of the most requested devices. In this video, I'll do a first set of scientific tests, and I want to start off with the sleep test. For the sleep comparison, I wore the Huawei Band 6 to bed for three nights. At the same time, I also wore this portable scientific EEG device and I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device can actually measure your brain waves and muscle movements. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. I also downloaded my data from the Huawei servers and converted the data in a usable format. Now, to the results I obtained. Let's first have a look at the accuracy over the three individual nights, after which I will do statistical overview analysis. Here we see the first night I recorded. On top you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using an EEG device. On the horizontal axis we have the time of night and as you can see I went to bed around midnight. On the vertical axis we have the different sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep and awake. Now the sleep stages are plotted in the same order that they're usually displayed in research. On the bottom you can see a similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded using the Huawei Band 6. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, which I marked here in purple, we see only a partial overlap between the Huawei Band 6 and the EEG device. It was also close to detecting the third one, however it did detect a lot of extra sleep at the end of the night. Looking at REM sleep, which I marked here in red, we see marginal accuracy. Overall, I must say it doesn't look too good. To my eye, the REM sleep seems more or less randomly distributed over the night according to the Huawei Band 6 and the overlap between the two devices is not that good. Now to see the sleep cycles, I added non-REM sleep in blue and again marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep and light sleep together called non-REM and always ends in REM. I would say that just based on the data from the Huawei Band 6, I would not be able to see the sleep cycles. Next, let's have a look at the wake time, which are marked here in green. This was not detected that well by the Huawei Band 6. I woke up four times during the night, but only the longer awakening was detected. Finally, sleep start and sleep end detection, which are marked here in yellow, was a bit mixed for the Huawei Band 6, at least for this night. It detected the moment I woke up quite well, However, when I was still reading in bed, it already detected me as having light sleep. Here we have the second night of sleep tracking. If we first look at deep sleep, we again see an okay match. Most of the deep sleep that I had was indeed detected as deep sleep, except for the second section. However, also a lot of extra deep sleep was detected. REM sleep is again not great. I cannot really see a match between the REM sleep of the EEG device and the Huawei Band 6. 
this also means that the sleep cycles could not really be detected for this night. Awake detection was again not that great, also for this night. Similar to the first night, it only detected the longer awakening, but not the shorter ones. Sleep start and sleep end detection were pretty good, so the total time spent in bed was pretty accurate. This is the last night I want to discuss. And this is a slightly different night, since I'd received my second COVID-19 vaccination the day before, and I actually at least subjectively felt I had slept deeper than I usually do. Interestingly, this is somehow reflected in the total amount of deep sleep the Huawei Band 6 detected, though this is of course very anecdotal. Now, if we first look at deep sleep, we see that for this night, it sort of picked up on all the three segments, but it started a bit too early sometimes. However, it again picked up on a lot of extra deep sleep. REM sleep is again more or less randomly distributed throughout the night, or at least it doesn't match with the actual REM sleep. And this makes also the detection of the sleep cycles basically impossible. Finally, none of my awake moments were detected, which is in line with what we saw for the other two nights. Finally, sleep start and sleep end are basically spot on for this night. In general, the Band 6 is decent at detecting when you fall asleep at night and also when you wake up in the morning. However, it appears to be not that great at detecting the actual sleep stages. It does detect most of the deep sleep I had, however, it detects way too much of it. Also, REM sleep detection was pretty poor. Based on these results, I would say that the Huawei Band 6 does not seem to be very sensitive. It detects too much deep sleep and not enough awake time. Based on just this data, I would therefore speculate that increasing the algorithm's sensitivity to movement could potentially increase its overall accuracy. To get an even more objective view of the results, let's calculate some statistics regarding the consistency between the Huawei Band 6 and the EEG device. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Now, enough self-promotion. Let's see what the overview statistics say. First, let's look at the total percentage of each of the sleep stages the EEG device and the Huawei Band 6 predicted. Here I display those percentages for the EEG device on the left and the Huawei Band 6 on the right. Overall, these percentages do not agree very well. The Huawei Band 6 mostly predicts too much deep sleep and not enough light sleep. The total amount of REM sleep is more or less correct, though as we saw before, it does not predict these at the right time. Also, it almost detects no awake time. However, of course, these percentages do not tell the full story. More important even than these total percentages is checking if the Huawei Band 6 predicts the correct sleep stages at the right time. And that's what I displayed here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device, and on the left the sleep stages according to the Huawei Band 6. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the Huawei Band 6. First, looking at deep sleep, we see that 75% of what was deep sleep was also predicted as being deep sleep. The rest was mostly predicted as light sleep and REM sleep. Next, looking at light sleep, we see that this is a bit worse. About 50% was correctly predicted as light sleep, however a lot of it was also predicted as deep sleep and REM sleep. This is likely where a lot of the extra deep sleep came from that we saw in the individual nights. Looking at REM sleep, this is pretty bad. Only 22% of what was actually REM sleep was also predicted as REM sleep. The majority of it was actually detected as being light sleep. In some ways that means that REM sleep, according to the Huawei Band 6, is actually a better predictor of light sleep than light sleep itself, according to the Huawei Band 6. Finally, awake time was not that great. It detected only 15% of my awake time correctly. Most of it was detected as light sleep and 25% of it was detected as REM sleep. These findings again point to the Huawei Band 6 not being sensitive enough to detect awake time. To conclude, the sleep stage detection of the Huawei Band 6 is not great. It detects the deep sleep that I had okay, though still with a lot of issues, especially REM sleep tracking is bad. On the other hand, the total time spent in bed appears to be tracked well. Next, let's take a look at SpO2 or oxygen saturation. In really simple terms, this is the percentage of red blood cells in the bloodstream that contain oxygen. This can be important to measure because it can be used as an indication for several medical conditions. For instance, it can be used to 1. Detect sleep apnea, where you basically stop breathing for 30 seconds or more during sleep. 
two, keep track of lung diseases, and three, potentially detect respiratory infections such as COVID-19. In all these cases, your blood oxygen saturation can drop to anywhere from the low 90s to 60%. Normal ranges, on the other hand, are generally between 95 and 100%. To see if the watch can detect low oxygen saturation, I measured my oxygen saturation while flying. In flight, the pressure in the cabin is decreased, thereby leading to a lower concentration of oxygen. The Huawei Watch 6 uses reflectance pulse oximetry, basically shining light on your skin and measuring the reflected light. The dedicated SpO2 monitor uses the more established transmittance pulse oximetry, which shines light on one side of your finger and measures what comes through on the other side. I discuss the difference in more detail in a video on the Withing Scan Watch, but in general, transmittance pulse oximetry is considered more accurate and is used in hospitals around the world. Let's take a look at the results. Here you can see how during the flight my oxygen saturation decreased. While we were parked and taxiing, my SpO2 was between 98 and 99%. And as we flew higher, you can see it dropped to about 90%. Then as we ascended again, my oxygen saturation also rose again. Now this profile here was recorded using a dedicated finger pulse oximeter, which I will use as a reference. At the same time, I also recorded my SpO2 using the Huawei Band 6. If we now plot the values according to the Huawei Band 6 as green dots in the same plot, we get these results. As you can see, the overall patterns are the same, with a higher SpO2 when we were at ground level and a lower SpO2 level when we were in the air. Overall, the results of the SpO2 measurements are not bad based on what we see here. When I had a lower oxygen saturation, the Band 6 mostly detected this. However, does it ever detect these low SpO2 levels at ground level when it's not supposed to? Now to check that, I collected SpO2 data in the morning and evening, taking one or more SpO2 measurements with the Huawei Band 6 and four measurements with the dedicated SpO2 monitor. In total, I did this for 20 mornings or evenings. Here I plotted those results. On the horizontal axis, we have the average value for the Huawei Band 6 for each set of measurements, and on the vertical axis, the same thing for the finger pulse oximeter. As you can see, almost all of the time, both of these are between 98 and 100%, and they perform similarly. Just for one day, the Huawei Band 6 recorded a too low SpO2. But overall, these results are not bad. For the next set of tests, let's have a look at the heart rate accuracy of the Huawei Band 6. To test the heart rate accuracy, I will compare it to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. I wore both the Huawei Band 6 and the Polar H10 ECG chest strap for 14 spinning sessions and 4 weightlifting workouts. That way I can check my heart rate in different heart rate ranges. Let's take a look at those results. Here I displayed an overview of the heart rate accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Huawei Band 6. The blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurement along this line had roughly the same value for the Polar H10 and the Huawei Band 6. The red line indicates those measurements where the value according to the Huawei Band 6 is half of the actual value according to the Polar H10. The reason I added this line is because in the past I've seen that many devices measure half the actual heart rate when they make a mistake. The more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. As you can see, overall there's a good agreement between the Huawei Band 6 and the ECG chest strap, since most points are along the blue line. However, we do see some deviations in the higher heart rate ranges between the Huawei Band 6 and the Polar H10. Since the points are below the blue line, this means that the Huawei Band 6 detected a too low heart rate in these moments. Let's have a look at the individual training sessions to see if we can find the underlying cause. Here you see the first spinning session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time, and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In red, I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and in blue is my heart rate according to the Huawei Band 6. As you can see, I took 5 short breaks in this spinning session where my heart rate would dip. The blue line almost always overlaps the red line, except for maybe in some moments during the dips here, where there was a slight delay in the decrease in heart rate. However, overall this is not a big problem. This is also what we see for the next spinning session right here, where most of the time there's a really good agreement, though sometimes there's a small deviation. 
However, I was surprised to see that the next five spinning sessions showed some issues, which is what you can see here in this first one. The band six really struggles to keep up with the high heart rate which is also what we see in the next four sessions as well. Like this one here, this one here as well, and also for the last two. So being this one and also this one right here. They more or less show the same pattern. However, after these five troublesome consecutive training sessions, the accuracy was better all of a sudden again for one session, which is what you see right here. There's a pretty good agreement between the Huawei Band 6 and the Polar H10. And the one following that shows some minor issues, but not as bad as before. However, all the training sessions that follow are basically spot on again, which you can also see here with again almost perfect agreement, and also here with an almost perfect match, and also here in this training session. And the same is also true for this final training session. And I do have a potential explanation. The set of bad accuracy sessions were recorded at my parents' place. And the ones with good accuracy were recorded in my own house. At my parents' place, I do not have a fan in front of the spinning bike, meaning that I sweat a lot more. At home, I have a fan pointed at me when I'm doing spinning, meaning I sweat a lot less. Apparently, this makes a huge difference in signal quality when recording my heart rate. Or there's something else that's different between working out at my parents' place versus working out at home. If I just use the results for my spinning sessions at home, we get this plot for the consistency. As you can see, the agreement is now much better between the Huawei Band 6 and the ECG chest strap. Only at a medium heart rate range, which I have during weightlifting, there are still some points that are not so close to the blue line. This is the first weightlifting session, and the agreement here is pretty good. During the second session, the values are more off and the heart rate measurements even seem to be too high sometimes, as you can see in this particular section. For this third weightlifting session, the agreement is better. Just some spikes in heart rate are missing. Basically, it can track the overall patterns in my heart rate changes, but not the sudden spike in heart rate that the company each said that I did. Because during weightlifting, I flex the muscles and tendons near my wrist, and this makes it difficult for the watch to accurately detect sudden changes in my heart rate. Finally, for this session, we see something similar. Overall, the Huawei Band 6 performs reasonably well when it comes to heart rate measurements. However, during my cardio workouts, I was surprised at the differences between working out at home or at my parents' place. This is similar to what we saw last week for the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3. I'm not really sure what to make of this yet. The Huawei Band 6 also features a step counter. To see if this counts my steps accurately, I went out and took exactly 5,000 steps in segments of 1,000 steps. To get an accurate step count, I manually counted my steps using this tally counter. Let's take a look at the results. As I mentioned, for the step counting test, I went out and I took 5 times exactly 1,000 steps. I wore the Huawei Band 6 on my left arm and I alternated holding the tally counter in my left and right hand for each set of 1000 steps, which is what the right and left labels refer to here. Now these are the actual steps counted by the Huawei Band 6 when I was wearing it on my left arm. And as you can see, they are pretty close to the actual 1000 steps I took for each of the five segments. However, it does tend to overcount ever so slightly. Just to put it into perspective, here are the steps counted by the Galaxy Watch 3 I wore at the same time. As you can see, they generally performed about equally well, however the Galaxy Watch tends to undercount, whereas the Huawei Band 6 tends to overcount. Overall, the step counting was very accurate. In a future video, I'll do an even more detailed step counting test. In that video, I also want to test if the Huawei Watch 6 gives any false positive steps. With that I mean, does it count any steps when it's not supposed to count steps? For instance, when I'm typing or cycling? I also want to see how it performs on other people. Overall, I think the Huawei Band 6 performed reasonably well. The heart rate measurements were okay, though it showed some issues for the sessions where I sweated a lot. As we've seen for most wrist-worn wearables, it does not pick up on all the peaks in heart rate during weightlifting. The oxygen saturation or SpO2 tracking was pretty good. It was able to distinguish between the high and low SpO2 values pretty well, and the patterns generally agreed with the finger pulse oximeter I used. I would say that the sleep tracking was one of the weakest points of the Huawei Band 6. It can detect your total time in bed rather well, however the sleep staging was not that good. I would consider the total time spent in bed to be the single most important thing to measure about your sleep. So if anything would be detected well, it should be this. 
Finally, the step counting accuracy was also pretty good, with the Huawei Band 6 counting the correct number of steps while walking. So, should you buy the Huawei Band 6? Well, in general, I'm pretty positive about it. If you want to track your SpO2 levels, need OK sleep tracking during cardio, and you just want to track your total time in bed with decent step counting, then yes, I would recommend it. On the other hand, if you want a wrist-worn wearable that tracks your heart rate and SpO2 accurately under all circumstances, then you should get an Apple Watch. If you want the best sleep tracking from a watch, get a Fitbit device, like the Fitbit Charge 4, Fitbit Sense or Fitbit Inspire 2 I looked at a while ago. The Withing Sleep Analyzer which you put under your mattress also performs reasonably well. Finally, I should mention some of the limitations of the data that I showed here. First of all, I just tested the watch for a limited number of days and just on me, and it will be interesting to see how it performs on others. Also, to do a full sleep comparison, it would be good to also test the watch against a full scientific polysomnography setup. We actually already assembled a polysomnography device using OpenBCI components, and we're now working on getting the software functional. This way, I will not have to rely on sleep labs for my testing, which is especially difficult in these times of corona. Now also a big shout out to my colleague Rob for the 3D printing and putting it together, and my colleague Freddy for his software and hardware expertise. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and also consider watching some of my other videos.